Mr. Chidambaram, you have a long parliamentary career. I request you that the document to which you have made reference and the document which you have sought to describe the video that may be placed on the table of the house. It is a public, it is a public domain. It is a public domain. Sir, just a moment. Sir, forget, forget the video. Forget no, the video. Forget it. You have made a reference. It is forget, on record. Forget the video. No, we no, know, no, no, no. You prime, know the parliamentary prime practice. minister met President Xi in Bali. I only want to know a simple question. Did they have an opportunity to discuss China? Yes. That's ah. all. Yes. Well, what is, that is no document there. There's no document there. We know, we know that President Xi was there. We know Honorable Prime Minister was there. We know that they met in Bali. All I want to know is, did they get an opportunity? Did they get an opportunity to discuss China? Answer is yes or no, that's all. I'm not asking anything. So let me conclude. So I have, I have raised in your absence, when the Deputy Chairman was occupying the chair, five questions. And I was waiting for you to come to, to raise this sixth question. My time. Who is he? Who is he? Is he giving a ruling now? Is he giving a ruling now? One second. One second. One second. One second. One second. One second. Please take your seat. 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 Everyone must be on the seat. Please take your seat. Take your seat. Sir, therefore, no, one, one second. I'm concluding. I'm concluding. Before, before, I'm you concluding. before you conclude. Before you conclude. I'm concluding. Sir, I'm concluding now. Take your seat. Take it. Take. 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 Take your seat. Take your. Take your seat. Take your seat. Take it. Honorable members. Honorable P. Chidambaram. Mr. Deputy Chairman, sir. You'll pardon me. I was very reluctant to open the debate. And I'll tell you why. In recent past, the lead speaker says his piece. The other members of the opposition say their pieces. The Honorable Finance Minister says his or her piece. And then the House returns the bill. Where is the debate on the issues that we raise? Where are the answers to the questions that we ask? I would humbly request you to make a note of the issues that we raise, the questions that we ask, and please ensure that those from the Treasury benches or the Honorable Minister deals with those issues and deals with those questions. Otherwise, this becomes a meaningless ritual, especially in a money bill. Because even if we don't return the bill, in 15 days it is deemed to have been returned. But I think it's very important that the issues that we raise, the questions that we ask, must be answered. With that, uh, with a sense of apology, I open that with that comment, and I'll move on to the appropriation bill and the supplementary demands. I intend to speak for a very short time there's ample time for colleagues in my party to speak. I have six points, and I'll deal with them briefly. In the supplementary demands for this year, the government is asking authorization for 3,25,756 crore as cash outgo. 
There is another 1,10,180 crore, which will be additional expenditure, but it will be matched by additional savings, so we can leave that out. Out of the cash outgo, they are asking for defense capital expenditure for construction of strategic and border roads of 500 crore. Let me say at the outset, all of us grant you 500 crore. We will happily grant you more if necessary. Whatever is required for defense forces, whatever is required for capital expenditure, for construction of strategic or border roads, or buying equipment, we'll happily grant it because we know that it's for the national security. But I'll come to this point last. Before we grant, we want to raise a few questions. And I hope that before the bill is returned, the Honorable Finance Minister or anyone from government will answer those questions. Let me move on to my first five points. The first point is the GDP for 2022-23 at current prices, according to the budget estimates, was 258 lakh crore. 258 lakh crore assumes 11.1% nominal growth over last year's GDP at current prices. If the growth is 11.1%, in current prices or nominal growth, I have only two small questions. What will be the inflation rate and what will be the real growth? I remember having asked this question when the budget discussion took place. We are now nearly nine months into the financial year. I did not get an answer when the budget discussion took place. I sincerely hope I will get an answer. How does this 11.1% break up? What is the inflation and what is the real growth? Now my second point is, if the Honorable Finance Minister and the government wish to spend 3,25,756 crore, we understand that there is a need for more expenditure. Now, where will the government find this 3,25,756 crore? As far as I know, there are only three ways. A, the government has already collected money in excess of the budgeted revenue receipts. They already have 3,25,786 crore, and they're coming to the House saying, I already have this money, I'm spending it. That's route A. Now, the second way is to borrow. You can borrow an additional 3,25,786 crore and say, I'm borrowing and I'm spending. There's a third way, a little more technical, but I'm sure the House will appreciate it. Government expects nominal growth to be more than 11.1% shown in the budget. If the nominal growth is more than 11.1%, the GDP will be more than 258 lakh crore. The denominator will rise, therefore you can borrow and spend another 3,25,786 crore without breaching the fiscal deficit of 6.4. <clears throat> My second question is, again a very simple question, does the government propose to take route A, it already has the money, or it proposes to take route B, it will borrow more? or it will take route C, 
that it expects the GDP to be higher and therefore the fiscal deficit will be met at 6.4%. I want a specific answer. Is it A or B or C? And I'm willing to be corrected, none of the above. I'm willing to accept even an answer, none of the above. Is it A or B or C and none of the above? My third question is, this is a matter of some concern. According to the budget, the gross tax revenue is 27,57,820 crore. Of this corporation tax, this is on corporates, is 7,20,000 crore. Income tax is 7 lakh crore. Now, if you do the proportions, you will find that corporate tax accounts for 26.1% of the gross tax revenue. When this government came into office in the previous year, 2013-14, the gross tax revenue was 11,55,838 crore, of which corporate tax was 3,93,677 crore. As a proportion, corporate tax in the gross tax revenue was 34%. Now, what does this mean? I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm simply giving the numbers. It's for the House to decide whether this is the right path to take or the wrong path to take. The corporates contributed 34% of gross tax revenue. Today, the corporates are contributing 26% of gross tax revenue. Why? has this great benefit been conferred to the corporates that they contribute 8% less of the gross tax revenue. Who's contributing the others? The rest. The rest is contributed by income taxpayers, middle class, upper middle class, other income taxpayers, excise payers or GST payers, which is you and I, customs duty, which is passed on to the common people, cesses, taxes on petrol and diesel, that accounts today for 74%. Corporates are only contributing 26%. Nine years ago, corporates were contributing 34%. It is because this government has conferred a huge bounty on bonanza on corporates. Yes. Yeah. Is that fair or not fair? It's for the House to decide. Yeah. And after conferring this bounty, I hear the Honorable Finance Minister go to the FICI, go to CII, go to Chambers of Commerce, and say, please invest. Why are you not investing? In fact, in one meeting, I saw her say quite legitimately, sort of mildly scolding them for not investing. If, this, if God is in his heaven, the BJP is in power, and everything is hunky-dory, and the climate is extremely propitiate for investment. Why, despite conferring a huge bonanza on the corporate sector, why are they not investing? That's my question. Why are they not investing? Private investment is low, sluggish. Why are they not investing? If all is well, according to the government, why is the private sector not investing? despite conferring an 
bounty on the corporate sector. You know what this 8% means, sir? 8% of 27 crore will be almost 1% is 10% is 2.7 lakh crore. 8% will be about 2.5 lakh crore. 2.5 lakh crore is the bonanza conferred on the corporate sector, yet they are not investing. My question is, why? And I want an answer so that we can be enlightened why the private sector is not investing. My fourth point is, In 1990-91, GDP at constant prices was about 25 lakh crore. That is when, after that, liberalization started. In 12 years, this GDP doubled to 50 lakh crore. In 10 years, it doubled again to 98, 99 lakh crore. So the first time the, the GDP doubled was, it took 12 to 13 years. Second time, 10 years, it doubled. Now technically, therefore, one would expect, and this is a fair expectation, a government that has been in power for nearly nine years should double the GDP in 10 years? If we are able to double the GDP in difficult times, 91 to 2003-04, that period is attributable to Mr. Narsimha Rao's stewardship and Mr. Vajpayee's stewardship. And then we were able to double it again in 10 years under Dr. Manmohan Singh's leadership. This government should double it again in 10 years. If 100 lakh crore should have become 200 lakh crore or should become 200 lakh crore in 23, 24, when this government completes 10 years of government, will it complete 200 lakh crore? I know the answer for myself, but I want the Honorable Finance Minister and the government to answer that for the benefit of the members. Will you be able to double the GDP which you inherited by the time you demit office in 10 years? If you are able to double the GDP, I salute you. I don't want to make any prediction. I don't want to be a doomsday prophet. I wish them well. But please answer my fourth question. Will you be able to double the GDP that you inherited by the time you demit office in 10 years? My fifth point is, I mean, this is something which the Honorable Finance Minister has spoken, so it's nothing new. Of the four engines of growth, government expenditure is robust, and much of the 3,25,786 crore will go into government expenditure, which is good. I only wish that the expenditure is efficient and the outcome is as good as the expenditure. But that is a different matter. But what about the other three engines of growth? We know that private investment is sluggish. Just see two graphs in the Indian Express today. Private investment is sluggish. They are certainly not summoning their animal spirits. I don't know why it's called animal spirits. They should be human spirits. But somehow we have got used to calling it animal spirits of investors. Whatever spirits as long as it's not alcoholic spirits. Why are they not summoning their spirits to invest? We know it's down. Private consumption is down. You can't deny that. 
high-end items are being sold. Mercedes-Benz cars and BMW cars. That, that is being sold. But what about consumption by the poor and the middle class? If consumption is good, why should one-third of our children be stunted? Why should over half of our women be anemic? <coughs> These are all accepted statistics in government publications. Government's National Family Welfare Survey says these numbers. So consumption is low, except the high-end items of the very, very rich. Consumption is low. And the fourth engine, exports are low. The trade deficit is increasing. Our trade deficit with China alone is 73 billion. 73 billion dollars with one country. Our trade deficit, the numbers are there in today's Indian Express. The graph of exports and imports and the gap known as trade deficit is higher. So if three of your four engines are not growing, why? There must be an explanation, there must be an answer. And has the government taken into account that many of the world's leading economies are headed towards a recession today. Britain is in a recession. Germany is in recession. The US is in a technical recession, except that their employment growth is robust. France and Italy may escape recession. Japan is, as you know, is quite happy with modest growth. China is growing at only 3.3% this year. Therefore, many of the countries, many of the countries are heading towards a recession. Leading economies are heading towards a recession. Welcome, Mr. Chairman. If many of the countries are headed towards a leading, uh, toward leading towards a recession, I, my question is simple, without blaming anyone. Does the government take into account, reckon the fact that the world's leading countries are heading towards a recession? If they are leading towards a recession, and if three of your engines are sputtering, how do you propose to deal with the situation? How do you propose to stimulate growth? This is my fifth question. Sir, so you've come when I'm completing my five questions, but there is still one left, and that's the most important one. And I hope that... I'm so glad the most important is kept. Yes. <laughs> I said at the first that I will keep it in the hope that you will come at that time. Mr. Chidambaram is very senior. I claim to be senior to many, but he is the one acknowledged more senior. Now, I said at the opening, the government is asking 500, and 500 crore for defense capital expenditure for strategic roads. And I said, without a dissent, without a murmur, the government will gladly grant the government 500 crore or even more. But I want answers to a few questions. These are strategic and border roads in the Northeast, is what the supplementary grant says. Now we know who is the threat in the Northeastern border, Northern and Eastern border. So our questions are very simple questions, which we are asking again and again. Has, the, has China conceded anything on hot springs? Have the Chinese agreed to discuss the friction points in the Doklam Junction and in the Depcham Plains? You are creating more buffer zones. What does a buffer zone mean? 
According to our information, a buffer zone means there will be a no petrol area. China will not petrol. India will not petrol. Does it mean that we are no longer petroling? This is a, this is a supplementary demand. Modi ji, you were 13 years finance minister. I can speak on any subject when the demand is there for money. You know the rule. I want to know. I, I, I'm sure uh, anything and everything does not include anything and everything. I, I'm, I'm not criticizing anyone. I'm asking questions. No, I, I'll make only one suggestion. During your long career, you have had the occasion to hold very high positions. And by virtue of that situation, you are well in the know of governance issues. Any diversion, I'm not or, or even, a, even I'm a asking in, on strategic and I'm strategic sure border roads. I'm no, as long as it was on that, that's all it I'm was fine. That's it, all, sir. Sir, it went little beyond. That's all I'm speaking on. That's all I'm speaking. Pointed questions. Pointed questions. Only on that point. Does it mean that we are no longer patrolling in areas where we were patrolling? Number four. Number four. I'm not yielding. I'm not yielding. Number four. The U.S. Defense Department spokesman has said, and our spokesman have also said, that there is massive building of infrastructure on the other side of the LAC, and equally, our government is also building massive infrastructure on the other side. Now, what is this infrastructure on the other side? I don't want you to tell me what is the infrastructure on our side. That may be a defense secret. But what is the infrastructure that they are building on the other side? That your satellites will be capturing pictures. We know that they have built roads, bridges, uh, settlements, helipads, communications. Now, please tell us what is the massive infrastructure that China is building, and I don't want you to tell us what is the equally matching infrastructure that you are building on our yes. side. I don't want you to tell us. And finally, I saw a video clip, and I was quite happy, of the Honorable Prime Minister meeting the President of China at Bali, uh, at the, and they were sh shaking hands. I'm, I'm. Point of order. Can I have the mic on? Sir, roll number, roll number 110, under legislation, scope of debate. The discussion on a motion that the bill be passed shall be confined to the submission of arguments either in support of the bill or for rejection of the bill. In making his speech, a member shall not refer to the details of the bill further than is necessary for the purpose of his arguments, which shall be of a general character. So what is being, what is being mentioned by the honorable member, Mr. Chidambaram, is beyond the scope. We are not discussing legislation on, uh, on border security. So this is completely unnecessary. I request that these remarks be expunged, sir. The honorable member, has raised an issue pertaining to applicability of Rule 110. Frankly, this rule has a rationale, and this rule does indicate contours within which deliberation has to take place. It says the discussion on a motion that the bill is passed shall be confined to the submission of arguments either in support of the bill or for the rejection of the bill. In making his speech, a member shall not refer to the details of the bill further than is necessary for the purpose of his arguments, which shall be of a general character. Without getting into details, I would urge the honorable member with his experience to, to take note of the essence 
and spirit of the rule. Yes, we are and, not. And, and also be cognizant that defense issues, security issues are of critical consequence. Correct. I'm not asking and, for secret and, and, information. And sir, one second. I'm not asking any secret information. A, a, man at, a man at your level has to set a float an, I, eco, ecosystem, have, an ecosystem whereby on security yes, sensitive yes, issues we I rise to a different level. I have not asked for a, I have said what I what they don't have to tell us. I've even said that. Mm. Now the last question is, I was very happy to see the Honorable Prime Minister meet the President of China in Bali and I saw a video, they're shaking hands. Our Prime Minister did the talking. In that short clip, I did not see uh, President Xi, Xi uh, say anything. I just want to know, I just want to know, if, without knowing, getting into the details, was the border situation discussed? Yes. Just yes or no. Don't tell me what you discussed. Just tell me yes or no. Was the border discussion discussed? This is beyond this. We are asking, you are asking 500 crore for the border. You are asking 500 crore for the border, and I'm entitled to ask this question. I'm entitled to ask uh, this Mr. question. Mr. Chidambaram, uh, like... Sir, like parliament, a, is, uh, parliament is not as chamber sir, to sir, censor. Like a, like, a sh like a shrewd senior advocate who uses court craft to get into the terrain by saying I'm not getting into the terrain. Sir, you have made reflection about our prime minister. I've said nothing. No, three things you have, three things you have said. I said, I things. don't want to tell me three what things. he said. Sir, sir, three things you have said. One, that the Honorable Prime Minister said something, there was no response. I, I have developed... I am not asking what one, he said. One, se one second. I didn't ask for that. One, one, one second, one second. No, no, please, please, uh, no, no, Mr. One, Chairman. One second, one... Please I, don't, um, please don't I, I misinterpret have, me. I, have, I did I, not ask what he said. One, yes. Give me a minute. Give me yes. a minute. I, I have developed a practice here that Honorable Members when they are engaged in debate, make reference to documents, videos. You may place that on record, on the table I of have, the house. I do not wish to know No, no, what that may said. be placed on the table of the house, so that we'll examine it and go about it. The video yes. clip did not have a video. It's only a video clip which is available in all channels. No, it's a sir, video clip for a few seconds. I just really want to know. I want to know. Why is there such a reluctance sir, to say, sir, did the Honorable Prime Minister discuss, yes or no, this, uh, got no, the opportunity no, I, I, to I, I discuss want, China with President I am on a different point. Answer is yes or no. Answer I, is yes or one no. Second, one one second. Second. One one second. Second. One second. Issue or not, we have a right to know. Let so him speak out. Well, 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 you should tell them also. You are casting us persons on the chair. You are sir. casting us persons on the chair. We are not the, casting us. One, yes, one second, one second. One second. The honorable member sir. repeatedly cast us persons on the chair. No, no, I'm not this casting us persons. Please take your seat. But, no, take one, your seat. Take your seat. Take your seat. One second, sir. One second. Take your seat. One second, sir. No. Take your seat. Take your seat. Take your seat. Take, first, take your, first take your seat. First, first, first take your seat. You directly made an allegation against the chair that the chair is not controlling them. Number one. Number two, 
Mr. Chidambaram, you have a long parliamentary career. I request you that the document to which you have made reference and the document which you have sought to describe, the video, that may be placed on the table of the house. It is a public, it is a public domain. It is a public domain. Sir, just a moment. Sir, forget, forget the video. Forget no, the video. Forget it. You have made a reference. It is forget, on record. Forget the video. No, no, no. We know, no, we know no. that you the know prime, the parliamentary prime practice. minister met President Xi in Bali. I only want to know a simple question. Did they have an opportunity to discuss China? Yes. That's all. Yes. Well, what is, that is no document there. There's no document there. We know, we know that President Xi was there. We know Honorable Prime Minister was there. We know that they met in Bali. All I want to know is, did they get an opportunity? Did they get an opportunity to discuss China? Answer is yes or no. That's all. I'm not asking anything. So let me conclude. So I have... I have raised in your absence, when the deputy chairman was occupying the chair, five questions, and I was waiting for you to come to, to raise this sixth question. I am, I am, I am time, I am time. No time, sir. My time. My time. Who is he to? Who is he? Is he giving a ruling now? Is he giving a ruling now? One second. One second. One second. One second. One second. Please take your seat. 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 Everyone must be on the seat. Please take your seat. Take your seat. Sir, therefore, no, one, one I'm concluding. I'm concluding. Before, before, I'm you before you conclude. Before you conclude. I'm concluding. One second. Take your seat. Take it. Take, 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 take your seat. Take your, take your seat. Take your seat. Take it. Honorable members, it is very painful. Every time, every time we send a signal from the upper house, that generates disillusionment. People are worried. Is it the way the upper house should be conducting itself? Are we going to send such kind of signals? And I am little surprised the kind of body language aggression I have to face. That is not the style of anyone else. We don't have to act in group. We don't have to be on our feet. I try to accommodate everyone with whatever one has to say, if I have used my authority to issue a direction that is based on my long experience, I was involved with parliamentary affairs three decades ago. This is the wholesome practice. If an honorable member has chosen to make reference to a document, the chair is well within its rights to direct the member to place that document on the table of the house. And that for a simple reason, that members are entitled to analyze it, assess it, and they take it forward. I am sure the honorable member will keep that in mind and do it during the course of the proceedings today. Please continue. Sir, therefore, I sincerely hope that, although this house uh, can only recommend on a supplementary demand and an appropriation bill, since a large amount of 3,25,756 crore, which we don't grudge if it's for relevant expenditure, we are granting this amount. I would sincerely hope that the government's treasury benches and the Honorable fin Finance Minister will enlighten us on the questions that I've raised. Yes. Otherwise, as that famous saying is, uh, we are in the same advanced stage of wisdom at the end of the debate as we were when we began the debate. Thank you. And uh, I was listening to you in my chamber, so I am fully updated with the other issues also.